Alrighty guys, and welcome back to another LEGO Ninjago set review, and today we have set number 70728, and that would be Battle for Ninjago City. You got three instruction booklets, two of the really big ones, and then one that's smaller. You know, the two really big ones build the building, the smaller one um, builds the, uh, you know, all the other things like Zane's the glider, the tree, the overlord's mech, and a little terrace thing, I think, right? Maybe. Anyway. So this set comes with, uh, I think, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight figures. We'll start off, obviously, with the least exciting ones. Those would be the Nindroids. Um, you know, you get two of them that look like this. They just have different weapons. So you go. The back printing for these guys is the same as well. And so is the head printing. Front and back. And I mean, we've seen these guys a bunch before, so, you know, not too exciting, we'll just leave them over there, for now. And then, um, we do have this Nindroid here, who has a different torso printing than the others, but he has the same, um, head printing, he's like the one without the mask, yeah. And he does come with a sigh. And then, we we'll go on to the other figure that's not, um, that's not exclusive to the set, and that would be Jay. Uh, the only thing that's exclusive is like the shoulder pads come on this version, the other version they don't. So, you know, this is the one of the only two ways you can get Jay. Jay's actually the hardest to find of the rebooted figures. And you can see his face there pretty well. Um, yeah, nothing too, too exciting about this guy. Back printing's the same, and he does come with this techno blade, which is also, I guess, kind of cool. Um, yeah, you know, other than that though, this guy's not the best figure. Um, you know. Because also you really can't have like two J's. You can have a man as many Nindroids as you want. You don't really need two J's. You don't really need two of any of the ninja. But it's nice to get them in multiple sets just because then, you know, some people get certain sets and some people get others, and you don't have to get them all to just get all the ninja. Which, I mean, that's kind of nice, in a sense. But, you know, I got all the 2014 sets anyway, so, you know, I don't need two J's. And there is his Tecto Blade. Now, we'll go on to probably, um, I don't know. But this is one of the cooler figures in the set, because it's exclusive to the set, and this would be the episode 32 through, 32, 32 through 34 version of Lloyd. You can see his torso print is pretty cool. It's got like a stone army armor. That's what this armor is. That's really kind of weird right there. It's got a little, I don't know, a little black coloring for some, for some reason. He obviously has his hair and his 2014 face, which I will uh, get to. Like the only part of this figure that's exclusive is the um, torso, but it's a nice exclusive print, so. There's the front, and we are going to be getting a Kai with this version um, in the Summer Minifigure Gift Cube. So that's cool. Um, but so far, we've only gotten Zane and Jay. And the reason that they gave, uh, I mean, Zane and Lloyd, and the reason that they gave Jay shoulder pads was probably to make him look a little bit more like this version without having to uh, make the new printing. But there's Lloyd's face. And he obviously has no printing on his legs, like the other version from 2014. And I'll probably do a comparison between all of the Lloyd versions and all the Zane versions. And maybe the other ones for uh, 2014. But, you know. Whoopsies, I just broke Zane's uh, little Technoblade. Zane here is kind of interesting because he does kind of come with a vehicle in the set. He obviously has his regular face, which we've all seen plenty of times. So I really don't need to show you, but I'll show you anyway. There's Zane's face. And the torso printing on this guy is really cool. And it's a little bit different from Lloyd's, you can see, because it has the two bands over the, like, corner armor things, which is a little bit different than all the others. He's the only one, I think, that's like that. But this is pretty cool. This is the last suit Zane wears before he kind of dies in episode, um, 34. And he does come with a glider which I will showcase now and then I will take it off him and just show you him with the shoulder pads again 
So he does come with this cool little trans blue shield, which didn't appear in the show, but it does look pretty cool. Same with the glider, it didn't appear in the show. But I don't know, I really do kind of like this glider. It's kind of cool. So you you can have him like this when he's like gliding, or if he wants to shoot the missiles and attack, like straight up, you can turn it, which I really kind of like that function. You can turn it. And it doesn't, like, let you turn the wings separately. They have to be together because of this piece here. So, you know, kind of kind of creative there. Um, and then you can shoot the flick missiles. But other than that, not a ton to the glider. It just, it's kind of a nice detail to add to the set, to be honest. But, yeah, as I said, it doesn't appear in the show. So, it's not my favorite part of the set. Mainly because of that. I'm just going to put the glider over there. And I did show you his back printing probably, but I'm just going to show you it again quickly. There you go. And, um, yeah. That is Zane. And now, the next figure that we're going to move on to is probably going to be Nia, because we'll show the Overlord with his little mech thing. And Zane obviously comes with his Technoblade. I don't know if I mentioned that. Now, we do have the 2014 version of Nia, which is really nice. The torso printing is really cool, and it is exclusive to this figure. Same with the leg printing, so that's really nice. The face printing is not exclusive to this figure, and it doesn't really look much like Nia, but, you know, it, it's good enough. It looks good with the mask, not really with the hair. I've tried it with the hair, because I have the hair, but, you know. And then she does have back printing too. So, there you go. And she comes with swords. In this set you get a bunch of extra katanas, which is kind of interesting. But it kind of makes sense because you get a ton of them. And one other thing I want to point out is that the helmet is basically the same, except for, unlike the old version of Samurai X, we have a black helmet instead of the dark gray one. So, that's a little different. And we're going to take those figures and put them aside, because we're going to take a look at the big boss. Mr. The Overlord. So, the Overlord here, you can see, uh, does come with his little mech spider thing. The thing I notice about this figure that I kind of dislike is the fact that in the show he's really big. Like, this mech is really big. Um, but, you know, it's kind of the same size as Zane, the opening there. It's just a little bit odd. A little bit different, but... No, I guess it's not really bad. Um, the Overlord does come with black legs. Where did I put them? Um, yeah, I threw them in with all the other extra pieces, which I put in my recycling bin. It does come with a brick separator, by the way. But let me grab the legs out of here. And you get to do you do get a bunch of extra weapons and pieces. But um, the Overlord comes with legs that you can use when he's just walking around. Which is kind of cool. But, um, I like him with the slope better because he looks cool. I do wish that they had gone with printing on the legs and a, uh, like, cape, like Vitruvius's, except, like, purpley. Because that would have looked really cool and it would have been more accurate to the show. But his face, you can see, is really creepy. Um, really suits the Overlord, though. And you can see he's got his golden armor printed on there. Um, he does have the golden armor like front piece or chest piece or whatever um yeah and this is i believe i'm like nearly 100 percent sure that this is a new part for um this set and it, i believe it's currently exclusive to this set too um and then back printing too on this guy he also has back printing on his head which is kind of weird but you know Whatever. It's not like a double face. It's like just random back printing. And then he has his helmet, which is obviously, if you remember from the show, it falls and it's giant. So, again, inaccurate, but cool enough. He does come with this weird staff, which doesn't appear in the show as well, but it is kind of cool. And now, before we put him back in the mech, we're just going to take a little look at his little spider mech thing. It does have the three arms, which can move up and down. And uh, these things can move up and down, too, if you want them to. You can just leave them like they are, though, and it'll look fine. There's a sticker in there. 
which uh, looks really good when you put the uh, overlord in there, which we'll see in a second, because these things are attached like that, which I don't know if I totally like that, but I don't really hate it either. And these gold things, I'm glad they included those, because those are important, kind of, in the show. Like, that's where Zane holds on when he's destroying the overlord. And then we do have a nice flag, which is actually three flags with uh, stickers. And on the back, it's the same. Those are the same stickers on each side. Then we have a sticker here on his uh, missile shooter, which can move up and down. And it's a spring-loaded missile. And this is the only spring-loaded missile we get in the set, actually, which is a little bit odd. Usually, I from I think in every other set that I've gotten spring-loaded missiles, there's been two, but... Oh, wait, no, there was another one. There was one. But you can see, it looks really cool when you put the Overlord on there. It just looks really kind of awesome. He's a really cool villain. So, with that, we're going to move on to the other parts of the set. Starting with, first, this little uh, entryway pagoda thing. It's like the same size as the base. That's what it looks like if you put it right up at the bottom of the building. Um, I'd say it looks pretty nice. It's really kind of basic, but, you know, it gets the point across. Yeah. I do wish they'd, I do kind of wish that they'd, like, done the inverted slopes on the bottom. Whoops. Because that just would have looked a little bit better, in my opinion. But, what do I know? Um, and it is only one wide, which is a little odd, just because the slope there. But, other than that, it's pretty cool. And we do have the tree over here, which there is a zip line going on the tree, but we'll get to the zip line when we get the rest of the building. You know, it's got the little two sections actually the zip line but the tree looks nice enough for this set for this purpose as well just to be a tree it definitely gets the job done but it's kind of probably a nicer tree than some of the other trees you get in lego so not going to complain about it it's a cool tree and we're going to move basically everything over to the side and i'm going to lift up my camp and um just go like this and then you can see that so anyway if we move this over here you can see from the front it's a really really nice looking uh, building there are a couple functions that make the set really cool and if we look up at the top you can see that but first we're just going to take a quick look around the outside of the set you can see the back it's got this leaf here. This is going to be a little hard to do. And then um, on the other side, it's got another leaf. That's what it looks like from the front. I'm not going to do a ton until I go into the features, but you know, you can see there and see there. Pretty cool. You do have some stickers here, notably, on both sides of the two of those. And then a sticker there, but those are the only stickers on the building itself. These are all printed. I'm going to just take a look there, you can see those, and um, the little golden dragons, but other than that, we're going to undo the tripod and get down a little bit lower um, for the bottom sections. So on this side, you can see this will turn around, and there's some weapons there, there's some weapons on the other side too. Um, you can see the staircase. There are little doors here that the minifigures can fit through to get to the back. And then there's the other door on the other side, the rotating door, which I think those are actually really cool, to be honest. And you do see the little terrace patio thing. Um, I'm actually going to take off the zip line so we can just detach the tree for now. Um, in the bottom, you can see that's what it looks like when you uh, have the little thingy in there. You can see, kind of in there. Um, there's a torch here. In this thing, there's like four gold studs. You can't really see them that well. There's a barrel in the center. This is where those other little doors come out, the two small doors. And this thing does something, which um, I'll explain the function that it does when we get to the other side. And then we do have a little jail cell, which I find this a little odd because you can get to the weapons from the jail cell, but 
whatever. I mean, it is nice to just have the jail cell for the ninja to lock up the bad guys. And it does have the nice little key piece on there. Um, going up, we'll take a look at the interior. Um, we do have just an empty box here. There is stuff in the box on the other side. Um, this is empty too, but it's a little cabinet. And you do have another cabinet next to it back there with the two little uh, bottles. There's a little grill with some hot dogs. One fell off. And this is supposed to be a table with a chair, which I don't really like that much. There's nothing really in the center part. But then when we get over here, there's a crate. It's empty, but it can open up. It does have a sticker on it, which is nice. And then I'll get to that in a second. Um, this is the other crate. It does have an axe in it. And then there's a uh, wrench and a walkie-talkie there. But inside here, we have a really cool little sticker up on that top piece that I'm pointing at right now, in the center of the camera. It's like got the out the building shape, and it shows like a red dot. And we do have some printing, some printed parts in there. I might do a little bit more detailed um, view of this building after I do a couple modifications, maybe. So you know. Up on the top floor, we do have a missile shooter, which I'll show you from the other side. This stores ammo for another thing. And this right here is a bed and ammo for another thing. I am just going to do a quick view of the roof as we turn around. It's the same on both sides, so you're not missing out on much. But um, back to the front. Notice we do have the fezes in gold. But um, right up here, you'll see in a second. Um, I'm gonna, you know that thing I told you does a function? This is what it does. It spikes up, uh, on the stairs. So that's pretty cool. Um, the doors do open up nicely. And that's what it looks like when the doors are open. We do have these little lanterns. Just, you know, noting that. Um, now, I'm showing you, basically, an outline of the set. You've seen all the... Parts. Now we're just going to show you a couple more of the functions, and then we'll end off this video, probably. Um, by the way, up at the top, I didn't really do a view of this area. This is the, like, area at the very top. It does have a Sensei Wu hat, and in the back there. So, right here, these are going to be the two functions that we're going to go over. This one shoots stuff if you push these down it'll do something with these which i'll show you from the other side and this you can shoot the discs with so right here if we go like that if i turn if i go back here with my hand and go like that we can just catapult these things from these i really do kind of like that function it's kind of actually a really interesting one too um now i haven't really tried this disc function but I'm going to try it right now for you guys. So this one, uh, you are supposed to like push that down and, uh, oh, it shoots a disc. Nice. That's actually kind of, kind of a nice function there. It actually works. So anyway, without further ado, that is Battle for Ninjago City. And that's a really cool set. Um, I didn't even pay the full price for it, but I probably would have now that I know how cool it is, you know, but I got it for cheaper on eBay because, you know, the box was broken. Oh, wait, I, I almost forgot one of the coolest parts. So anyway, there is the zip line. That's what it looks like. And uh, here is the little thingy that rides down it. So, if we take Lloyd, say, and we go like this, if I hold him up there for a second, um, he'll go sliding down. It helps if you can, like, get the, uh, string up a little bit more, but, you know, it's a pretty cool function, not the greatest, because it doesn't always work, because he sometimes gets stuck with the swords, especially. If you take the swords out of his back, it works pretty well. So anyway, that is Battle for Ninjago City. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. 
And if you did, and have a fantastic day, and I'll see you guys all later. I know this was a long one. If you stuck through the whole thing, um, I really appreciate it. Helps me out a ton, and see you guys all later.